In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember the poor souls in purgatory, the members of our purgatorial society, uh, and we always keep in mind this month the names of those written in the Book of the Dead. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call upon the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom we honor today on the Saturday. We ask the Lord for the forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, the Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who were pleased to choose Blessed Mary as the virgin, virginal chamber where the Word would dwell, grant, we pray, that under her protection we may participate joyfully in her commemoration. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that now at last you revived your concern for me. You were, of course, concerned about me, but lacked an opportunity. Not that I say this because of need, for I have learned in whatever situation I find myself to be self-sufficient. I know indeed how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of growing, going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I have the strength for everything through him who empowers me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. You Philippians indeed know that at the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, not a single church shared with me in an account of giving and receiving except you alone. For even when I was at Thessalonica, you sent me something for my needs, not only once, but more than once. It is not that I am eager for the gift, rather I am eager for the profit that accrues to your account. I have received full payment and I abound. I am very well supplied because of what I received from you through Epaphroditus, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts justice, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Blessed be the man who fears the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who fears the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. And the person who is dishonest, oh, excuse me, if therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard all these things and sneered at him. And he said to them, You justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is of human esteem is an abomination in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. The uh, second reading describes uh, St. Paul's relationship with the Philippians who had sent him money. And it's interesting, he, he thanks them for that, but he seems to go on quite a bit about that, and there, I think there's some important details. There was a, a book I had come across um, that was entitled Misreading Scripture Through Western Eyes. And uh, it's the idea that sometimes we kind of, we impose upon the scriptures our presuppositions. In other words, this is sort of how we do things, so we just assume that we can impose that on the text, and, uh, and that our understanding is, would be the same as their understanding. It's not always true. Um, one of the things that sometimes comes up in Scripture is you'll hear, sometimes they will mention slaves. So if a person has slaves, here's what they are to do, a master and a slave. And we, from our perspective, we say, oh, well, slavery is awful. What a horrible thing. So you say, well, this is, this is a terrible thing. And so we, we look with disdain at that expression. Maybe the better way to say that would be sometimes a master and a servant. That doesn't maybe sound so bad to our ears, but it was something that was a very normal part of life in Palestine at the, at the time of the um, in New Testament times. And oftentimes it was actually a very helpful institution in this sense that sometimes if someone was not well off and didn't have, uh, wasn't able to take care of themselves, they would sometimes attach themselves to someone whom they would serve, and a relationship was formed. A relationship between the master and the servant. The servant would be there to, to um, meet the master's needs, but the master would also take care of the servant. And it was more than just the, the way that we would think in a negative sense that slave owners just give orders. No, there was a real paternal care that was required um, of those who were your servants. So a two-directional relationship was established, a bond between the, um, the servant or the client and then the master that was there. And the reason why I think this passage in Philippians is so important um, and, and why what St. Paul is doing is so critical is because St. Paul had accepted monetary donations from the Philippians. So as he would go on, they sent money to him. That begins to sound a lot like the master-client relationship. The Philippians paid for St. Paul. So St. Paul becomes the servant, and the servant is indebted to the, to the patron or to the master. And so in a certain sense, then, if the Philippians need something, they can call upon Paul because, well, they've provided for him, so they have a right to expect from him the things that they would need. And what I think is happening in this passage is St. Paul is taking great pains to distance himself from that type of a constrained relationship. And the way he does it is actually very clever, is that first of all, he recognizes that he does not need anything. He's learned to live with excess or with poverty. And so for his part, he doesn't depend on anyone. He depends on the Lord. If he is a servant of anyone, a slave of anyone, he's a slave of the Lord. And so the Philippians, and so what did they do? Well, they very generously supplied for that. St. Paul says, not that, not that I needed any of this, but what they, Provided, St. Paul describes as a gift 
given to God. And so he says, what you really did is you offered up uh, uh, an, a, an, for with fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. Makes it kind of sound like they're offering a sacrifice much like they would in Old Testament times. So your contribution was a religious offering. So this is something you can say that you gave to the church. And so uh, all of those are ways to sort of distance um, any sense of obligation on St. Paul's part as though somehow that servant uh, master relationship was being formed. And in this sense, the way that, that St. Paul does this is everything's now directed to God. The Philippians, they gave their gift not to Paul, they gave it to God. And who will reward the Philippians? God will reward you. And he says that at the end. So my God will fully supply for your every need. St. Paul, is he the one who received? Who did he receive from? Everything he receives is from the Lord. The Lord fully supplies my need. And who is St. Paul accountable to? To the Lord. And therein is, in fact, a great equalizer in all of these relationships and something we can apply to every one of us. Every one of us stands at, in debt to the Lord. If there is any master, and if we are the servant of anyone, all of us stand beneath the Lord as the one who provides for us and the one to whom all of us ultimately must be accountable. And that's really the image, I think, that St. Paul is, um, puts together here. So it's a really fascinating concept. It's a, it's a great way in which St. Paul takes something that would have been culturally present and understood at the time, and then he twists that in a way that, that leads to greater insight in the gospel. And it's really a fascinating thing to see the way that St. Paul works in this way. Let us recognize that all of us are servants of the Lord. The Lord, in fact, does provide for all our needs. And let us rejoice uh, in the privilege that we have of serving the Lord and of experiencing his merciful love for us. We stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, for the holy people of God, that we might seek to serve the Lord always and to do what is right and pleasing in his eyes. We pray to the Lord. Lord <clears throat> we pray that in abundance we might be thankful for the gifts that we have, and when we are in need that we might, up, we might offer up our penances to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for a mind mindfulness on, a part, on the part of people everywhere, for the poor and the needy in our own community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick, the suffering, for the depressed, for those especially who are alone, for those in particular need, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the faithful departed, for the poor souls in purgatory, in particular for those whose names are written in the book of the dead, we, we commend them into the merciful hands of our Savior for eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for the church. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. May the offerings of your, your people make in commemoration of Blessed Mary be acceptable to you, O Lord. For by her virginity she pleased you, and in, hum and in humility conceived your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age, when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid and gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of this spiritual food, we pray, O Lord our God, that steadily imitating the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always be found intent on service of the Church, and may know the joys of doing your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the book I mentioned um, is actually written by a Protestant, and there are some conclusions I don't always agree with. But uh, there are still some good insights, though, that I think we can all take from that. So, Misreading Scripture Through Western Eyes is the, is the title. Maybe I'll find it and then link to that in the, uh, in the video description. You don't care if I do that. <laughs> so, and let, we honor the Mother of God and we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended.